Hey guys, this is the first time I'm actually doing a walkthrough of any kind of sort, so please bear with me. I'm new at all this, but I'm going to give it a try with this app. So I'm going to start with a game that I know very well, because I've become pretty much obsessed with this game. It's called Don't Starve. I'm sure all of you have heard of it or are familiar with it. Markiplier actually did a great walkthrough with this game when it first came out, and that was actually what introduced me to it. I saw his walkthrough and I thought that's a pretty cool game. Looks like fun. It's fun to watch the walkthrough. But I couldn't justify paying for it when I first saw it. I was a little hesitant about buying a game online like that. And then a friend let me know that Steam was offering a special little deal on it. I think it was either $1.99 or it was $2.99. It was a really, really good deal. So I said, you know what, what the heck, I'll try it, download it, see what happens, and I'm so glad I did because, like I said, I've fallen in love with this game. It's a lot of fun. Um, sometimes I'll just do the regular survival mode and play through that. I think my record on the regular survival is 81 days. I think it was either 81 or 82. I'm not sure on that. I know it was in the 80s. So I lasted a long time before I got killed by a penguin. But I'll explain that later. Um, so you can do survival mode. Uh, adventure mode is a little bit different. That pops up as well. But I also discovered a while ago, since I haven't really had a chance to do these kind of walkthroughs, I'm going to explain it now. I discovered that you could actually create your own presets with this and your own rules, your own world. And I've been having a lot of fun with that because you can do a lot of cool stuff with that. So I'm going to explain some of the little tabs here and what everything does and what you can expect in the game and then I'll try to do a full walkthrough of the game. Okay? So with the world size, I always want it huge. It's a big world out there to explore and there's a lot of fun stuff to find so I always have it huge. Land branch is always good and land loop is always good because if you get lost you know you can always find your way back. Uh, the seasons, I always leave these on default. Why mess with mother nature on that? If I'm not ready for winter time and winter comes, that's my own fault. I didn't survive. I'm going to starve, which is the premise of the game. So you don't starve. So I always leave that on default. Uh, same with the season start. The game itself, when you're doing the regular no custom mode, it starts in summer, typically. So I just leave that on summer. And same with the seasons. If I'm not ready for winter time and I haven't stocked up enough, I'm just leaving it there. Uh, day. I'm not going to mess with time. When night comes, if I haven't gotten a fire or I'm not ready for it and I get killed by something in the darkness, my own fault. So I always leave it on default with the, with the day. Uh, as far as the weather is concerned, this right here and lightning strikes, rain, uh, heavy, heavy downpours will diminish your sanity. So if you don't pick flowers or something like that or have a straw hat, your sanity will diminish. And you'll start seeing seeing shadows and seeing little black bunnies, and it, you end up going insane. So I leave that on default. Same with the lightning strikes. Um, I'll explain in a little while why you need to be fearful of lightning strikes. But just know that you need to be fearful of lightning strikes. These little caverns, they're different rock formations than the typical rocks that you can mine. These ones look a little funny, and when you mine them, you still get the rocks that would come from them, but it leads to a little cavern. These caverns have different supplies in there, they have little things you can pick up, things you can't find on the surface. The only problem with these little caverns is if you make your campsite, whether it's temporary or your permanent campsite, right near these things, at dusk, bats will come out and they will kill you. So just be mindful of the little caverns. Little pig heads. These lead to basically stone resurrection tables. So if you die at any point in the game and you have these, you've already act, um, activated these little sensors, they're throughout the game. Yeah, the regular game has them too. If you activate these prior to that and say you get killed by a giant spider, which guaranteed will happen at least once in this game, then you will get resurrected on these stones. The problem with this is you will lose anything that you had with you. So say you had a backpack full of supplies, um, bees, butterflies, which I'll get to in a little bit, you will lose all those. 
um, and wherever you died, your stuff will stay behind. You will get resurrected with uh, some rocks, some marble, um, a evil little ghost sensor thing. I'll explain that in a little while. But your sanity will diminish greatly. Um, you'll have half health when you get resurrected, and you will be very hungry. So it's always best to either get back to where you died to reclaim your belongings or start picking food and flowers to get your sanity back up. You also lose that resurrection stone. Once that stone is used <clears throat> and you've come back, you cannot use that stone again. It's gone. Sometimes the game will put multiples throughout. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you just gotta hope for that. The skeletons. These things I typically leave on default. You're gonna find a lot of cool stuff floating around anyways, but the skeletons basically guarantee they're former their players that didn't make it, that died, and have left their belongings behind. So sometimes you'll find blueprints, sometimes you'll find supplies, things like that. I always leave it on default. You're gonna find that stuff anyways, and the blueprints are great, but once you get the machines going, you can create your own. Flowers, um, like I explained before, are great for your sanity. You can collect these, and as you pick them, your sanity will increase. And if you get 12 of them, you can create um, almost a flower wreath that you can wear, and that'll keep your sanity up for a little while, but that will start to die. The flowers don't last very long, and once it's dead, it loses its power. And you also can't get rid of the flower hat in the sense where you can burn it and have kindling, basically. I've tried. You can't burn it. Uh, the grass is great because you need the grass to create certain tools. You need the grass for your basic fire pit. And you can actually dig the grass up when you get a uh, shovel. You can actually dig the grass up, and as long as you have manure, you can replant it at your permanent campsite and have a lot of grass. And grass, like I said, is a good thing to have. It takes a while for it to come back once you've planted it or once you've picked it, and it will not come back in the winter time. Same with the branches here. These are a little different than the grass. You need these for all your tools. Um, any tool that you create, your axe, your pickaxe, things like that, needs these branches. Um, you can dig these up, like with the grass, but you do not need manure to replant them, so that's great. But just like the grass, they do not come back in the winter time. So I always make sure there's a lot of those. Moving on. These thorns, I learned the hard way. You cannot pick them without getting hurt. Uh, they're good for blow darts and things like that. So you can pick them, but you will lose some health when you do. The reeds. Um, these are good for making papyrus, and you can make compass out of the papyrus and other tools. The only problem with this is, one, it typically grows in the swamp, which I uh, will explain in a little bit, is not a safe place to go. But you can also not dig these up. I tried and actually got killed by a tentacle because I was trying to dig it up and didn't see it come out of nowhere and it killed me. But I'll explain the tentacles in a little bit because they are extremely important. Trees, everyone knows trees are important. You need these. There's two types of trees. You have these ones, and then you have fir trees. The fir trees do not have pine cones, so when you chop them down, nothing comes out but the wood, um, the cords of wood. But with these trees, once you cut them down, you not only get the cords of wood to make fireplaces um, and log suits, things like that, but you also get a pine cone, or a couple of pine cones, depending on the size of the tree, which is great because you can replant those and basically create your own little tree farm. And who doesn't want their own little tree farm? Uh, the flints are great. You need these for most of your tools. Um, so the more you can collect of those, the better. Uh, certain tools take more flint than others, like the axe, I believe, only takes one flint, while the pickaxe takes two. So you need a lot of flint. The regular rocks are good. Um, you can make... There's permanent fire pit, which is good to have. Um, the fire pit will actually appear on your map, so if you're getting a little lost and you're not sure where you are, you can create a fire pit, or if you want to come back to a place, um, because there's a lot of supplies there, make that fire pit, it'll appear on the map, and you can make your way back there. So you need a lot of rocks. You need 12 rocks to create a fire pit, but you can also make stone walls with these, so the rocks are a good thing to have. 
Same with the berry bushes. The berry bushes are very similar to the grass um, in the fact that you can dig them up and replant them with manure. They do not come back in the winter time, so it's always good to have a lot of those and conserve them during the winter. So if you start running out of food, you have these berry bushes very close by your camp so you can eat those instead. Um, problem with the berry bushes isn't the berry bushes themselves, it's what tends to live in the berry bushes. You have turkeys running around, and I'll explain the turkeys in a little bit, but they are pains. If anybody's ever dealt with a turkey in real life, their video game counterparts are very similar. They will eat all the berries on you, and actually they will run from bush to bush very quickly, and like, just, I don't even know how to describe them. They just basically vacuum up the berries, and there you go, you lost your berries. The turkeys, however, are killable, and you get meat from them, but I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, carrots, obvious food, excellent, actually helps increase your health when they're cooked as well. These mushrooms, now I learned this the hard way, you cannot eat these things raw, cooked, by itself. If you put them in a crock pot with something else, you can eat them, because they'll be mixed in. But you cannot, if your health is diminishing and your hunger is diminishing and you need to eat something, do not eat these things. They will kill you right on the bat. Uh, the mandrakes. These things are a lot of fun. And they do appear in the regular game, but I love having them in the custom because you can stock up on these things. And if your health is getting low, then you can eat one. It'll increase your hunger. It'll increase your health. It does diminish your sanity just a little bit. But the best part about these things is, say you're being attacked by an entire herd of spiders, you can eat a mandrake, and the mandrake cry will put them to sleep temporarily, giving you a chance to either run away or kill as many as you can. So the mandrakes are really good. Uh, the problem with the mandrakes is, at dusk and at night, if you try to pick these things, they come alive. And they will basically run around and follow you wherever you go. And it's adorable. They're cute. But they get annoying very quickly. And you can't try to catch one. You can't try to kill one. It literally just chases you around. And Wilson will just go, get away from me, leave me alone, things like that. And then dawn breaks and they're gone. They're back to their little plant self and replanted themselves. Uh, jackrabbits are good. You'll see a lot of them. Um, they're tough to catch unless you have a bunny trap, which are easy to make, but you need grass for that. And carrots. The problem with the bunnies is if you kill one, your sanity will quickly diminish. Uh, killing a bunny is a bad thing, but they do provide you a little morsel of food. So they are good, and in the winter time, you can actually collect a certain number of bunnies and turn them into earmuffs. It's a good thing, in a way, but at the same time, your sanity will diminish, and I haven't really found that the earmuffs help a lot in the winter time. I, to me, they seem to actually not do anything. I'll have a thermal stone, and that seems to keep me warm for a little while. But I've tried it without the thermal stone, with just the earmuffs, and they really don't seem to do anything. So I don't know. I don't know on that one. Um, uh, butterflies. So butterflies are great. Who doesn't like looking at butterflies? The butterflies are good because you can catch them if you're able to catch one or kill one. It'll actually increase your health when you eat one. So those are always good to have. And I learned that if you have a net, you can catch the butterflies and replant them to make flowers. So like I said, flowers are good to have because they help your sanity. And if you're creating beehives, like I will explain later that I like to do, the more flowers you have, the faster your, your beehives regenerate. So, butterflies are very good. And like I said, who doesn't look like looking at butterflies? The birds. Okay, so there's two types of birds. You have little red ones, and you have these raven-like things. They don't do much. Um, they do leave seeds, which are always good. So, seeds provide food. You can plant those. You can cook them, things like that. Um, you can kill the birds, and they will leave little morsels or feathers, but not always. Um, okay, I only have about... 30 seconds left for this timer, so I'm going to put a pause to this right here, and then I will explain turkeys in the next video. So thanks for watching, and I hope this wasn't too boring. Like I said, I love this game, and I really wanted to do a walkthrough of it and explain it. So thanks very much, and have a great day.